adapted from archaic translation by H. T. Francis and R. A. Neil. Jataka number 419. Solasa Jataka. Here is a golden necklace, etc. The master told this tale while living in Jitavana Monastery, concerning a female servant of Anathapandika. The story is that one feast day, when she was going with a number of fellow servants to a pleasure garden, she asked her mistress Panalak Hanadevi for an ornament to wear. Her mistress gave her an ornament of her own, worth a hundred thousand pieces. She put it on and went along with the other servants to the pleasure garden. A certain thief yearned to possess the ornament, and with the design of killing her and taking it he began talking to her, and in the garden he gave her fish, flesh, and strong drink. He does it, I suppose, because he desires me, she thought, and at evening when the others lay down to rest after their sports, she rose and went to him. He said, Mistress, this place is not private. Let us go a little farther. She thought, anything private can be done in this place. No doubt he must be anxious to kill me and take what I am wearing. I'll teach him a lesson. So she said, Master, I am dry owing to the strong drink. Get me some water, and taking him to a well asked him to draw some water, showing him the rope and bucket. The thief let down the bucket. Then as he was stooping to draw up the water, the girl, who was very strong, pushed him hard with both hands and threw him into the well. You won't die that way, she said, and threw a large brick upon his head. He died on the spot. When she came back to the town and gave her mistress the ornament, she said, I have very nearly been killed today for that ornament, and told the whole story. The mistress told Anathapandika, and he told the Tathagata. The master said, Householder, this is not the first time that servant girl has been blessed with wits rising to the occasion. She was so before also. It is not the first time she killed that man. She did it once before, and at Anathapandika's request, he told the tale of old. Once upon a time when Brahmadatta was reigning in Banaras. There was a beautiful woman of the town, called Sulasa, who had a group of five hundred royal dancers and pleasure girls, and whose price was a thousand pieces a night. There was in the same city a robber named Satuka, as strong as an elephant, who used to enter rich men's houses at night and plunder at will. The townsmen assembled and complained to the king. The king ordered the city watch to post bands here and there, have the robber caught and cut off his head. They bound his hands behind his back and led him to the place of execution, lashing him in every square with whips. The news that he was taken excited the whole city. Sulasa was standing at a window. And looking down on the street she saw the robber, loved him at sight and thought, if I can free that stout fighting man, I will give up this bad life of mine and live respectably with him. In the way described in the Kanavera birth she gained his freedom by sending a thousand pieces to the chief constable of the city and then lived with him in delight and harmony. The robber after three or four months thought, I shall never be able to stay in this one place. But one can't go empty-handed. Solace's ornaments are worth a hundred thousand pieces. I will kill her and take them. So he said to her one day, Dear, when I was being hauled along by the king's men, I promised an offering to a tree deity on a mountaintop, who is now threatening me because I have not paid it. Let us make an offering. Very well, husband, prepare and send it. Dear, it will not do to send it. Let us both go and present it, wearing all our ornaments and with a great group of attendants. Very well, husband will do so. He made her prepare the offering and when they reached the mountain foot, he said, Dear, the deity, seeing this crowd of people, will not accept the offering. Let us two go up and present it. She consented, and he made her carry the vessel. He was himself armed to the teeth. And when they reached the top, he set the offering at the foot of a tree which grew beside a precipice a hundred times as high as a man and said, Dear, I have not come to present the offering, 
I have come with the intention of killing you and going away with all your ornaments. Take them all off and make a bundle of them in your outer garment. Husband, why would you kill Met for your money? Husband, remember the good I have done you. When you were being hauled along in chains, I gave up a rich man's son for you and paid a large sum and saved your life. Though I might get a thousand pieces a day, I never look at another man. Such a benefactress I am to you. Do not kill me, I will give you much money and he your slave. With these requests she spoke the first stanza. Dash. Here is a golden necklace and emeralds and pearls. Take all and welcome. Give me place among your servant girls. When Satuka had spoken the second stanza in accordance with his purpose. Fair lady, lay your jewels down and do not weep so in pain. I'll kill you. Else I can't be sure you shall give me all your store. Dash. Solace's wits rose to the occasion, and thinking, this robber will not give me my life, but I'll take his life first by throwing him down the precipice in some way, she spoke the two stanzas. Dash. Within my years of sense, within my conscious memory. No man on earth, I do protest, have I loved more than you. Come here, for my last salute, receive my last embrace. For never more upon the earth shall we meet face to face. Satuka could not see her purpose, so he said, Very well, dear. Come and embrace me. Sulisa walked round him in respectful salutation three times. Kissed him. And saying. Now, husband, I am going to make acts of homages to you on all four sides, she put her head on his foot, did acts of homages at his sides, and went behind him as if to do acts of homages there. Then with the strength of an elephant she took him by the hinder parts and threw him head over heels down that place of destruction a hundred times as high as a man. He was crushed to pieces and died on the spot. Seeing this deed, the deity who lived on the mountaintop spoke these stanzas. Dash. Wisdom at times is not confined to men. A woman can express wisdom now and then. Wisdom at times is not confined to men. Women are quick in advice now and then. How quick and keen she was the way to know. She killed him like a deer with full stretched bow. He that to great occasion fails to rise. Falls, like that dull thief from the precipice. One prompt a crisis in his fate to see. Like her, is saved from threatening enemy. So Sulisa killed the robber. When she descended from the mountain and came among her attendants, they asked where her husband was. Don't ask me, she said, and mounting her chariot she went on to the city. After the lesson, the master identified the birth. At that time the two then were the same two now, the deity was myself. Source. Adapted from archaic translation by H. T. Francis and R. A. Neil. Jataka number 420. Sumangala Jataka. Conscious of an angry frown, etc. The master told this tale while living at Jitavana Monastery, concerning the advice to a king. On this occasion the master, at the king's request, told the tale of old. Once upon a time when Brahmadatta was reigning in Banaras, the Bodhisattva was born as the son of his chief queen. When he grew up, he became king on his father's death and gave abundant alms. He had a park keeper named Sumangala. A certain Paxkabuddha left the Nandamula cave on a pilgrimage for alms, and coming to Banaras stayed in the park. Next day he went into the town to beg. The king saw him with favor, made him come up into the palace and sit on the throne, waited on him with various delicate kinds of food, both hard and soft, and received his thanks. Being pleased that the Paxkabuddha should stay in his park, he got a promise and sent him back there. After his morning meal he went there in person, arranged the places for his habitation by night and day, gave him the park keeper Sumangala as attendant, and went back to the town. After that the Paxkabuddha had meals constantly in the palace and lived there a long time. Sumangala respectfully attended on him. One day he went away, saying to Sumangala, 
I am going to such and such a village for a few days, but will come back. Inform the king. Sumangala informed the king. After a few days stay in that village the Paxkabuddha came back to the park in the evening after sunset. Sumangala, not knowing of his arrival, had gone to his own house. The Paxkabuddha put away his bowl and robe, and after a little walk sat down on a stone slab. That day some strange guests had come to the park keeper's house. To get them soup and curry he had gone with a bow to kill a tame deer in the park. He was there looking for a deer when he saw the Paxkabuddha and thinking he was a great deer, he aimed an arrow and shot him. The Paxkabuddha uncovered his head and said, Sumangala. Greatly moved Sumangala said, Sir, I knew not of your coming and shot you, thinking you were a deer. Forgive me. Very well, but what will you do now? Come, pull out the arrow. He made acts of homages and pulled it out. The Paxkabuddha felt great pain and passed into Nirvana then and there. The park keeper thought the king would not pardon him if he knew. He took his wife and children and fled. By supernatural power the whole city heard that the Paxkabuddha had entered Nirvana, and all were greatly excited. Next day some men entered the park, saw the body and told the king that the park keeper had fled after killing the Paxkabuddha. The king went with a great group of attendants and for seven days paid honor to the body. Then with all ceremony he took the relics, built a shrine, and doing honor to it went on ruling his kingdom righteously. After a year, Sumangala determined to find out what the king thought. He came and asked a minister whom he saw to find out what the king thought of him. The minister praised Sumangala before the king. But he was as if he heard not. The minister said no more, but told Sumangala that the king was not pleased with him. After another year he came, and again in the third year he brought his wife and children. The minister knew the king was appeased, and setting Sumangala at the palace door told the king of his coming. The king sent for him, and after greeting said, Sumangala, why did you kill that Paxkabuddha, through whom I was gaining merit? O king, I did not mean to kill him, but it was in this way that I did the deed, and he told the story. The king told him to have no fear, and reassuring him made him park keeper again. Then the minister asked, O king, why did you make no answer when you heard Sumangala's praises twice, and on the third hearing why did you send for him and forgive him? The king said, Dear sir, it is wrong for a king to do anything hastily in his anger. Therefore I was silent at first and the third time when I knew I was appeased I sent for Sumangala. And so he spoke these stanzas to teach the duty of a king. Dash. Conscious of an angry frown. Never let king stretch out his punishment. Things unworthy of a crown. Then would follow from his nod. Conscious of a milder mood. Let him judgment's harsh decree. When the case is understood. Fix the proper penalty. Self nor others will he annoy. Clearly parting right from wrong. Though his yoke is on men's necks. Virtue holds him high and strong. Princes reckless in their deed. Apply the punishment remorselessly. Ill repute is here their wage. Hell awaits them when they die. They who love the saintly righteous path. Pure in deed and word and thought. Filled with kindness, calm and awe. Pass through both worlds as they should. King am I, my people's lord. Anger shall not check my will. When to vice I take the sword. Pity prompts the punishment. So the king stated his own good qualities in six stanzas. His whole court were pleased and stated his merits in the words, Such excellence in moral practices and qualities is worthy of your majesty. Sumangala, after the court had finished speaking, saluted the king, and after acts of homages spoke three stanzas in the king's praise. Dash. Such your glory and your power. Never leave them for an hour. Free from anger, free from fears. Reign in joy a hundred years. Prince, whom all those virtues bless. Mild and bland, but firm in worth. Rule the world with righteousness. Pass to heaven when freed from earth. True in word, 
in action good. Take the means your end to gain. Calm the troubled people. As a cloud with genial rain. After the lesson connected with the advice to the Kosala king, the master identified the birth, at that time the Paxkabuddha passed into Nirvana, Sumangala was Ananda, the king was myself.